The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. Welcome to The Red Couch, the web show about internet freedom and security. Today, the journalistic sham that is 60 Minutes. The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost 5, a virtual private network that allows you to surf the web securely and gives you anonymity online. CBS show 60 Minutes broadcast a special edition from inside the National Security Agency, the NSA's headquarters, where it sought to give the point of view of the agency against Edward Snowden, the whistleblower who ran off with 1.7 million documents from the secret agency and is now hiding out in Moscow. The show was presented by John Miller, a former PR for the FBI. Yes, a man used to concealing secrets in an open society is the first journalist allowed access to the most controversial spy agency in America. Ethically questionable? Possibly. The show was trashed on Twitter as propaganda. And it was propaganda. Brilliant propaganda. Until everyone found out. Then it looked a bit ridiculous. So what did they try to do? Well, 60 Minutes set the stage for a Cold War thriller of East versus West and victim versus traitor. The NSA was the victim. Edward Snowden was the traitor. The American West, the hero, against the evil empires of China, Russia, and Iran. And just in case the audience was asleep, Miller drilled these messages into the viewers' minds using the marketing spell of repetition. Firstly, the NSA, as victim. No US intelligence agency has ever been under the kind of pressure being faced by the National Security Agency. The Snowden leaks have challenged NSA officials to explain programs they never intended to talk about. So the NSA is under a bit of a cloud. This is an agency that really um, is under the gun. Ultimately it was General Alexander who, who made the call to invite us in. He's fighting for his programs right now. Number two. Edward Snowden as sneaky and geeky traitor. So how did an obscure contractor and computer specialist pull off the most damaging breach of secrets in US history? A 20-something year old high school dropout contractor. The first secret Snowden stole was how to cheat on a test to get a job at the agency. This kid who is now in Moscow with 1.7 million classified documents They've allowed him to become the hero and they to become the villain. At home, they discovered Snowden had some strange habits. He would work on the computer with a hood that covered the computer screen and covered his head and shoulders so that he could work and his, uh, his girlfriend couldn't see what he was doing. That's pretty strange. This guy sounds like a bit of a weirdo. What kind of stupid organization would hire him? And now to the evil empires of Russia, China and Iran. Here's John Miller lightly grilling an NSA official on the secrets that Edward Snowden stole. So, I'm going to assume that there's one in there about China, and there's one in there about Iran, and there's another in there about Russia. Morgan, Charles, and Natalie describe to us how countries like China, Russia, and Iran use social engineering to get inside a network. Bob, who watches over it, explains it holds the records of the codes America has broken over the last 60 years. If I was Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, would I want what was inside you there? You would be greatly interested in what's in this box. How did he do it? I can't really talk about that. Do you think that he was recruited in either a Chinese or Russian intelligence operation? I can't answer that. And now for the next PR trick, presenting guesswork as fact. Before 9-11, did we have this capability? We did not. Is it a factor? Was it a factor? I believe it was. What General Alexander is talking about is that two of the 9-11 hijackers, Khalid al-Midhar and Nawaf al-Hazmi, were in touch with an al-Qaeda safe house in Yemen. The NSA did not know their calls were coming from California, as they would today. Yes, by spying on Americans, we possibly could have, maybe, perhaps, stopped 9-11. That part of the damage assessment considered the possibility that Snowden could have left a bug or virus behind on the NSA's system, like a time bomb. Yes, Snowden maybe, possibly, could have, perhaps, set a time bomb in the offices of the NSA. Well, he could have, 
parked a turd in the bushy hair of Betty White, but he didn't. Well, right now, it would be difficult to stop it because our ability to see it is limited. One they did see coming was called the BIOS plot. It could have been catastrophic for the United States. While the NSA would not name the country behind it, cybersecurity experts briefed on the operation told us it was China. One of our analysts actually saw that the nation state had the intention to develop and to deliver, to actually use this capability um, to destroy computers. Yes. The NSA stopped a Chinese conspiracy to destroy every single computer in the whole world. But hang on a minute. China produces every single computer in the whole world. So why would they want to wreck their own economy? The report also tries to use hyperbole in order to win an argument. The report does not give one single example of anyone being hurt by Edward Snowden's revelations. Nevertheless, NSA director equates giving Edward Snowden an amnesty with dealing with terrorists. Among those who think making a deal is a bad idea is Legend's boss, General Alexander. This is analogous to a hostage taker taking 50 people hostage, shooting 10, and then say, if you give me full amnesty, I'll let the other 40 go. The broadcast also details how the NSA broke the Fourth Amendment but it doesn't say it broke the Fourth Amendment. What they are doing is collecting the phone records of more than 300 million Americans. The report also tries to use clever language to conceal a crime. There was nobody willfully or knowingly trying to break the law. Yes, this means they actually did break the law. And now, what about this? But the NSA doesn't need a court order to spy on foreigners. Has the U.S. ever held the rest of the world in such contempt? Has it ever been so naked in confessing that there is one rule for us and another rule for them? I don't mean to be flip about this, but it has a kind of a little Dr. Evil quality. So, who was this show aimed at? Well, if we look at the sponsors, there's Viagra and the North Face. So, mountain climbing men with erectile dysfunction. <laughs>